Uh oh. We'll start with this. Yesterday in the women's bantamweight division, former champion Miyo Yoshida defended her IBF title unsuccessfully, at least to the judges, in a fight where I wasn't sure what was going to happen. And thus, I didn't make a pick. I didn't have a horse in the race. The first time out, the first time they fought, I went with Sherita Metcalf to win that fight, and she did. But in this rematch, I wasn't sure she could do it again. To me, she didn't. It's just being honest. Frankly, I think Miyo Yoshida was robbed yesterday in New York, and so does she. She said, taking my previous loss into account, I fought while keeping in mind the scoring criteria of the New York judges. It may look different in person than it does on video, but we received various opinions from third parties and related parties at the venue. Of course, the results are everything, but I am keenly aware of how difficult it is for Japanese people to compete overseas. And thank you, everyone, for your support. Once again, I didn't have a horse in the race. I didn't make a pick. And based on the fight that I saw yesterday, Mio was robbed. Oh. Former IBF champion Ebony Bridges said the same. Sad to see Mio get robbed of her title. Metcalf punched air and gloves and was getting her head snapped back the whole fight like a Pez dispenser. That's what I saw. The difference between this fight and the first one, Sharita Metcalf spent less time circling away and using the ring to walk Mio into punches. In this fight, she held her footing a bit more, oh. stayed mid-range a bit more, and tried four more punches, most of which looked like she was missing. That's what I saw. She was trying for a lot of shots that either weren't landing or weren't getting in cleanly, were getting caught on the arms and gloves. Instagram user that goes by the name Charlie Osawa said, Mio for real made Metcalf become Pezcalf. But politics and DEI, I get it. Nobody's surprised that a Japanese fighter was robbed on American soil. Twitter user that goes by the name ABC123Kazoo said, Totally bullshit scorecards. Mio Yoshida, Ebony Bridges, let's get revenge. Two of the real champions. I saw Poland's own Lara Grzeb react to the fight. I'm surprised she even took notice of it since she doesn't campaign as a bantamweight. She said, I'm just looking into this fight and if anyone else wants to say that my level's not world class, then I have no questions, is the skinny. And here's why I think Sharita lost this fight. She spent less time on the balls of her feet and this one moving around, and more time trying to try for punches and step into her punches, and she was constantly getting countered. Miyo Yoshida was able to land the jab, the lead hand, with some regularity throughout the entirety of this fight, constantly interrupting Sharita's forward momentum. And as Sharita's coming forward, she's trying for a lot of punches, but they're just not landing. They're either missing outright or being blocked. Showed more aggression than she did the first time out, but it was ineffective, at least from where I was sitting. Holding her feet and trying for more punches kept her within range of Mio Yoshida's jab, her sweeping right, and in those moments where she lunged forward, tried for some combinations, I mean, seemed to me that Mio Yoshida won the fight, won it clear. 8-2. Maybe 7-3, but per usual, I just don't expect a foreign fighter to get any kind of consideration on American soil. What it reminded me of was the Devin Haney versus Vasil Lomachenko fight. That robbery. Per usual, the American tribalists are gonna take it and run, make off like bandits, act like it was a clear-cut decision. There were noticeable boos after the judges' scorecards were 
were read. And after Shurita Metcalf was announced the winner, there was a lot of booing. Just like in the Devin Haney fight. Just like in the Devin Haney fight, I guess we're supposed to act like we don't hear it. It's really no less than I expect from this sport, and thus I'm not the least bit surprised that Mio Yoshida could not get a fair shake in New York. That's why for some, boxing is almost unwatchable at times when the right fighter doesn't get the decision, when the rightful winner doesn't win the fight. And so, the IBF title has changed hands. Shurita Metcalf is this division's full IBF champion. We'll see what Lou DiBella has in store for her. Perhaps a unification match with Shurnika Johnson? If Shurnika knows what's good for her, she won't travel to America for that fight. Foreign fighters, beware. They'll rob you blind in broad daylight and do it with a straight face and act like nothing's wrong. That's the way it is. It's not the first robbery I've seen and I've no doubts. It won't be the last in the sport of boxing. Men's heavyweight news. They held the kickoff press conference for the Usyk vs. Fury rematch yesterday, and Tyson Fury revealed that his wife, Paris Fury, had suffered a miscarriage the day before the Oleksandr Usyk fight. I'm not making excuses, but she was six months pregnant. It's not like a small miscarriage at the beginning. You have to physically give birth to a dead child on your own while your husband is in a foreign country. To go through that on your own isn't good. When she said she couldn't come over, I knew there was a problem. She said she had high blood pressure. Turkey LL Sheik ordered us a private jet to get around the high blood pressure, and she said she could bring the doctor with her. But she said she couldn't come. I asked her what was up and asked her to tell me, but she wouldn't, so I knew. She never told me she had lost the baby, but I knew. When I got back, I got the inevitable confirmation that it was gone, but she had kept it to herself taking the story at face value which i seldom ever do when it comes to tyson fury you have to understand that if you start off by saying i'm not gonna make excuses then you get into this entire thing what are you doing if not making excuses then why are you telling us this to elicit what sympathy understanding i remember immediately after the fight when the judges' scorecards were read, Tyson Fury said that they only gave Usyk the decision due to the war in Ukraine, the crisis between Ukraine and Russia. That's what he said immediately after the fight. What was that if not an excuse? Now he's talking about a miscarriage, a miscarriage that Paris kept to herself while he was in Saudi. And I'm sorry to say, but what is that? if not an excuse. You're telling us this to communicate what? That you had a lot on your mind? That there was a lot going on? You weren't focused? Now, Igis Klimas, who manages the career of Oleksandr Yusik, he was a lot more understanding. He said, sorry to hear about this tragedy, just the first time did I learn about it. It's terrible feelings. I had ones in the same situation with one of my fighters just two days before his fight happened. It's really big family tragedy. Sorry, Tyson. I hope God will give you a few more in the future. You don't think this is a tragedy? I think that Tyson Fury has spent enough time lying to the public that I don't take anything he says at face value, and I don't even know that I can believe this story. When he tested positive for Nandrolone, he said it came from wild boar testicles. Do you believe that shit? After the first Deontay Wilder fight, he said he donated his entire purse to charity. Do you believe that shit? Forgive me if I'm curt, but I don't know that I can believe anything Tyson Fury says when he's already spent so much time lying to the public in order to achieve favor. I don't know that this really happened, and even if it did, chalk it up to a case of the boy who cried wolf. I, I clowned around too much. Why? Complacency. Very much complacency. I think I expected it to be harder than it was up until that point of getting hit. Um, and I was hitting him at will, basically, head on body. So, yeah, you, yeah, I got a little bit greedy and paid the price, got caught, and, and we know what happens in heavyweight boxing. He talks about clowning around. And most of the clowning around he did in the fight was at the very start, at the very beginning, just giving away rounds to play to the crowd. I can't reconcile everything he's saying because he's saying so much. One minute you're saying you had a lot on your mind because of what was going on with your wife, but in the fight, you were complacent to the point to where you're playing around and playing to the crowd. The night of the fight, after the judges' scorecards were read, you said you felt you won. You said the only reason they gave Usyk the decision was because of the war in Ukraine. So which one is it? And since then, he's maintained that he feels he won that fight. He should have been given the decision. But if that's the case, why are you telling us about the situation with your wife? 
outside of the ring. Why are you now talking about complacency? Complacency, if you felt you won, then what's to explain? What about being complacent? You said you felt you won. I just don't have time for it. I don't have the patience. Whenever a guy in the sport of boxing starts off by saying, I'm not gonna make excuses. That's exactly what he does. That's exactly what Fury is doing. You're talking about this and you're talking about that. You got beat. You said you were gonna manhandle the little man. You said you were gonna manhandle the rabbit. That you would beat him easy. You spent the majority of that fight circling away from the little man, not taking it to him. The only one that got hurt in that fight, the only one that had his cage rattled, was Tyson Fury. So enough already. The rematch is here. Fury communicates to the media that he feels more focused this time and less complacent. We'll see. Before their press conference devolved into strange exchanges and one-word answers, Tyson Fury acknowledged yesterday that he is more focused and less complacent ahead of his rematch with Usyk than he was before their first fight. Morikam's Fury, 36, and Ukraine's Usyk, 37, were in London to promote their second heavyweight title bout, which will take place December 21st at Kingdom Arena in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. For Fury, it is an opportunity to regain his WBC title and take the WBA and WBO titles from Usyk, who won their initial 12-round bout by split decision May 18th. So wait, we get Fury versus Usyk on the 21st, then he knew he versus Goodman on the 24th. I like the sound of that. Now, most sports books have installed Usyk as almost a two to one favorite to defeat Fury in their immediate rematch. It's actually been about four and a half years since the Deontay Wilder rematch. The last time I was the underdog in these fights, said Fury, who is a slight favorite versus Usyk five months ago. What's going through my mind? I'm just looking forward to a fantastic fight. You know, last time in May, it was a fantastic fight. Usyk won the fight fair and square. I'm just looking to put on a great fight again. You know, it was very close last time. He got it by a point. I'm a little bit more focused, a little bit more lack of complacency, and I should do the job, what I need to do, you know? It's nothing drastic that has to change. A bit more of the same. A little bit more focused, like I say, and I will be victorious. Canadian judge Craig Metcalf scored Fury a 114-113 winner over Usyk on May 18th. Wisconsin's Mike Fitzgerald won 14-113, and Spain's Manuel Oliver Palomo won 15-112, scored their closely contested fight for Usyk, who was credited with a knockdown during the ninth round. Usyk became boxing's first fully unified heavyweight champion of the four-belt era. He has since given up the IBF title now owned by London's Daniel Dubois. Frank Warren, Fury's co-promoter, is confident. Fury will leave the ring with Usyk's titles this time around. It was a magnificent fight, unbelievably top quality heavyweight bout, Warren said yesterday. And the next one is gonna be, I think, every bit as good, if not better, because they've been in the ring with each other. They've shared that ring, and now they've got respect for each other. And I know they'll be looking for clues to try and negate what they feel the other guy's best moves will be, and so forth. But you know what? It's just gonna be great. It's gonna be great. And I believe in Tyson. I believed in him from day one, and I believe he can go and do this and do his business in style. I believe Tyson is gonna try to get off to an earlier start, minus the showboating. Don't give away those early rounds trying to play to the crowd and impress them. Impress the judges. That's what he's thinking. Not very many, if any, changes to the strategy or changes to the corner. Just focus on what worked. The problem is what was working was working up until he got caught. He was having success and he starts stepping into his punches. He gets caught. So the sooner you start doing that, the sooner you'll get caught again. You might understand Usyk a little better now that you've shared the ring with him, but it's not one way. He understands you a little better too. And now he knows he can hurt you. You're not too big to get rocked. I'd say either way, there's gonna be a, a stoppage either way. There's obviously question marks over, over Tyson's chin. Uh, he's been put down, he gets put down regular, but there's definitely no question marks about his art. He keeps on getting up and doing his job, so we'll, we'll see, it's boxing. Chins and, listen, every way boxing, you get hit on it, with someone over 15 stone, it hurts you. And put 15 stone with world-class ability, uh, it's, it's very, uh, very hard. And so there's no really such thing as a good chin, but we'll see. Just swing it out. 
May the best man win. Get fit and strong and go for it. Make it a fight. Very honest admission from Tyson Fury's older brother that anything could happen when guys are that size, that having a chin, Shane Fury is right, it's what separates the heavyweight division from every other division that you're really always one punch away from being knocked out because the guys are so big. That much weight and that much force behind a punch when the men are that size, having a chin at heavyweight, it's a tenuous subject. Fury goes over all the time. I mean, he's been going over his entire career with Nevin Pychik, with Steve Cunningham, several times with Deontay Wilder, at least once with Francis Ngannou. He did his very best to stay on his feet with Oleksandr Yusik, though in truth, the ropes were the only thing that held him up, held him from going over. It's not that Fury has a chin so much as Tyson Fury has great powers of recovery. I don't like Tyson Fury, but I have to give him that much. He has proven time and time again that even if you hurt him and rattle his cage, he can recover. He has. Shane Fury is predicting a knockout either way. Shane Fury feels that one way or another, this fight is ending in a KO. I agree. You guys know what I'm about to say. You know how I feel. I think that Oleksandr Yusik is going to look to close the show this time. I think Oleksandr Yusik, Igis Klimas, and Alexander Krasiuk understand. They've got all these plans for Fury. All these things that they want him to do, it was a Joshua fight at first, now it's a Dubois showdown. You can't let it get that far, that when they have this many plans for the fighter, it's almost as if they're banking on you losing. You can't give him that chance. And you don't leave it in the judge's hands. You take it out of the judge's hands. And so by now, everybody knows that in spite of a height discrepancy and a weight discrepancy, Usyk can hurt Fury. He came very close to stopping him, I believe, in December. He will. He's gonna knock him out. Fury doesn't plan on changing very much about his approach. He just wants to build on the success he was already having in the first fight. But it's that success that led to him getting rocked. That the sooner you start stepping into your punches, the sooner he can hurt you again, counter you again. Fury's account of events, he says it was easier than he thought. He says he was landing at will. So was Usyk. Frank Lauren went to, um, Usyk's dressing room after the fight and he said visibly something had been taken out of him. Do you think you took something out of Usyk in that fight? He was injured badly after the fight. I know he had a broken face bone and a broken jaw. He pushed himself to the limit at 37. He might not be the same fighter. And I know at 270 pounds getting banged all up and down by a man my size ain't going to be healthy for him in his rematch. So he's still carrying on. He claims Usyk had a broken jaw. No, he didn't. Reports from after the fight stated he didn't have a broken jaw. You say the fight took something out of him, but what did it take out of you? You're the one that got ragdolled. Hell, not just what did the fight take out of Fury, what has his lifestyle taken out of him? Because you're the one that's slamming down beers, you're the one that's ballooning in weight. I'm not trying to preach, and I'm not trying to judge. But for a man Tyson Fury size to drink to the point to where he face plants outside of the pub. It all takes something out of you, doesn't it? That you might be 36 and he might be a year older at 37, going on 38. But he takes better care of himself than you do. Stop me when I tell a lie.